Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, me and Ollie here today because we want to share our top tips for becoming a pro at Sword Warrior. Yes sir. Now I don't know if you can hear him, Ollie's sat in the background doing some else at the moment but he wants to be involved. So in no particular order, here are our tips. So one thing you definitely don't want to neglect is this guy here, the Drill Master. Now this guy has various challenges that you can do. They start once you get to level 50, and once you've completed them, they will give you a permanent boost to your health or attack, depending on which one you do. So what you need to do is when you qualify, click, go in, complete it. There's only five waves. I should have put auto on, because I'm not killing anything. And once you've killed these five waves, you'll get the permanent boost. So you see at the moment that my uh, attack is 12.038 plus 6k. So we'll see what that ends up as when I've finished. Now don't be afraid to save your powers or anything in here. Get them used. Uh, you'll probably need them, particularly as the waves get harder and harder. So I'm uh, hopefully I'll, I'll manage to complete this one. Let's see. Should be okay. There we go. All done. And here you go now, you'll see, so it now, it, so it was plus, I think it was 6.4k, it's now 6.99k, so it goes up a fair chunk each time uh, you get to do them, so I'm just going to quickly do my health on as well, you see the difference that makes, so I'm on 101.36k, okay, so there we go, I've just done the health one, and it was at 101k, and it is now at 106k, so there you go, Drill Master, get it done, do not neglect it, because it makes a considerable difference okay our next tip is rebirthing now the concepts of rebirthing will be really common uh, if you've played pretty much any roblox game most of them have some sort of rebirth function in sword warriors it can make a really really big difference so every time you rebirth you're gonna get one skill point which I'll show you what you can use those in a second you also get an xp boost as well which is gonna make you level up faster and you're also going to get extra damage to your slash and hero damage so it goes up a percent each time so I'm going to rebirth now and that will make my heroes and my sword do even more damage so there we go I rebirthed now at later levels like I was at then it can take a while to get to the level however at early levels you'll be able to do it really quickly so certainly at early levels I recommend you rebirth as often as possible because it will make it a lot easier uh, in the long run to get to the higher levels. Now we talked about that skill points, what do you do with skill points? So they're all in here in this skill tree here and as you progress you can unlock these skill points. Now I've done a cheeky little method where I've actually reset my skills so that I only am now spending points in the most powerful ones. I can show you that in another video perhaps but that's what I've got here. So really really important to rebirth, it helps you level up your skills and it will help you level up generally. Our next tip is all about enchanting. Now, to be able to do enchanting, you do need to unlock the horde camp. So I'm going to head here. And what you can do here is you can enchant your weapons. So there's all these different things that you can get. So these XP bonuses, gem bonuses, uh, critical damage, and so on. The one I always try to look for is lifesteal. Makes a big difference. Now, the enchants available will actually change with your sword. So at the moment, I've got one of the, um, what are these called? Are they mythicals? Eternity. Eternity, kind of mythical, best tier of them anyway. So on here I can get any of the enchants and I also get two each time. However on lower level ones you can see here I only get one enchant and I can't get all of them. Let's go to a really rubbish common one. So a really rubbish one, you can only get that. All you do, once you've selected your sword, hit enchant and off you go. There you go. And if you don't like that, you can carry on. And you can carry on. I'm probably only going to get... There we go, so I'm getting a few different things there. But that is enchanting. It makes a big, big difference. And if you get really lucky, you might get two level sixes if you've got one of the higher level swords. So, enchanting. Go and do it. Neglect it at your peril. Okay, our next tip is all about ornaments. Now, as you complete various waves and worlds, you'll be gifted with different ornaments, which you can access here. Now... They all do different things. So, for example, this halo, it heals us by 1% every 4 seconds. This baby dragon reduces the cooldown time on your skills. Treasure bag gets you more gems. 
Slim Balloon, which I think is meant to be Slime Balloon, uh, heals you for a bit more, and so on and so forth. So there are lots of really cool things, so definitely explore them in there. And make sure you equip the right thing for what you're doing. And by that I mean if you're farming for gems, equip the treasure bag. If you're trying to push as many levels as you can, you might want to consider the Night Cloak, depending on what heroes you're using and so on and so forth. So explore these, use different things. And at the end of the video, I'll go through the build that me and Ollie tend to use so you can see how we combine things all together. Now, we're still on the subject of ornaments. So not only can you as the player use ornaments, so can your heroes. And to equip them, you need to come to the hero monument. So once you're at the hero monument, just select the hero you want to mess with. So for this example, I'm going to select the priest and we go down to this little tab here. And then once you're in this screen, you can equip any of your unlocked ornaments onto your hero as well. Now, these work slightly differently uh, compared to what they will do when they're on your character. So, for example, if I were to equip this Night Cloak, which is the thing that makes me leap into the middle of enemies, that isn't going to make the hero do the same thing. No, no, no. It's more complicated than that, but it does actually tell you what we're doing down here. So, it says, when the ornament's hero owner power matches the corresponding bonus of the hero, the hero's bonus will increase. So basically what that means is the priest, for example, gives us extra health. So if I equip a corresponding ornament, for example, the balloon, and equip it, that's going to give me an extra health boost. If it was a damage related one, it would do the same if it matched the hero. So hopefully that makes sense. Basically, you're matching the ornament to the hero and that will mean you get more bonuses from your heroes. There we go, that's ornaments done. Okay, the next topic I want to cover is heroes. If you don't know what heroes are, that's these dudes stood next to me. So the guy in the white armor and this uh, angry looking lady here. Now to unlock heroes, you just need to complete various waves and you'll get um, unlock points. And then you can come to this hero monument, which is in the spawn world. And this is where you can equip them. So they all do different things. So for example, the Prophet, he gives us quite a lot of extra XP for every time we kill an enemy. The Priest will heal us. The Swordsman will help us attack. The Rogue will attack. And it'll also give us extra gems. The Paladin will protect us from damage for the first three seconds of every single wave. Now some of these guys are Robux. You can see here the Flame Wizard's Robux. The Shaman, who would be lovely to have, is a lot of Robux because he gives you life steal. So along with their abilities, what they'll also do is boost your character as well. So if you quit this guy, he's going to give you some more speed. If you quit the priest, you're going to get more health, more attack, and so on and so forth. Now you start off only being able to equip one, one of these guys. Unfortunately, it is Robux that you need to spend if you want to equip two. If you are going to spend Robux on this game, though, that is the one thing I would recommend you spend on. Anything else, spend it if you've got them, because it will definitely make it easier. But me and Ollie have only bought that, and we're doing all right. So you don't need to go out to spend loads and loads of Robux on this game to have fun and to do well at it. Our next tip is to not ignore the Eternian Guardian Hall. In here are some absolutely fantastic rewards. So the way this mode works is once you go into the box, you can see behind me standing in the box, you actually go into an endless battle which is wave after wave after wave after wave until infinity or until you die um dying is more likely than it running out of levels so this get harder and harder but what you can earn in there are first of all these auras so for example i've got one here that gives me an extra 12 percent uh, an extra 12 percent health which is amazing and there's loads of different ones there's damaged ones there's all sorts of things so you can get auras and then level them up you also earn this currency up here, so if you can see here I've got 40,000 of these pink gem things here. And you can spend them in here. And you can get some serious weapons. So here you can see currently this golden Favner or Favner. This is the currently the best sword in the game. And you can unlock it in here. So if you put the effort in and you can get to wave 70 or you've got a powerful friend who could boost you, which is what we do. Thanks Draug, by the way. Um, it's actually quite cheap and it's a guaranteed way of getting these swords. So rather than trying to hatch them, just come here and you can get an amazing swords. There's also some really, really impressive ornaments in here as well. If you look at this one, uh, heals the master's health by 2% every four seconds, makes a counter attack and deals 15% of your attack when you get attacked. There's this one which gives you life steal. There's all sorts of crazy stuff in here. So don't neglect it, get it done. You definitely won't regret it. So there you go. There are mine and Ollie's seven top tips. I know it's a random number, but there's seven for the moment. Top tips 
to help you become a pro in Sword Warriors on Roblox. Now, if you've got any more tips you want to share with people, please put them in the comment section below so everybody can benefit from it. Uh, and that is it from us today. So thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you found it useful, and we'll see you in the next one. See you later.